everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I have got this really adorable music box. Well, that's what I'm calling it because it reminds me of a music box I used to have, but it's a jewelry box basically. So we received the Fairy Tales collection in my latest Trimcraft design team package, and it's beautiful. If you haven't seen my unboxing, I will link it up here so you can pop over and have a look and I'll just show you in detail more of the products. But you can just see here just the kind of colour palette and it's just, it's gorgeous. So I've used the lovely little fairy print here and it's got that real nice shine over the top, it's like a glitter. And then on the top here I have used all the matching embellishments that come. So you've got these beautiful dried flowers, these ones here that you build up. Um, these butterflies are from my own... No, no, sorry, these are from the same, I'm so used to using my own stash in these butterflies, but these are actually the ones from the collection. Um, the flat back pearls, the wand, this is a metal wand in the middle and it's absolutely beautiful. The make a wish, which was one of the sentiments from the pack. The doily here as well, this is also from the pack and then all the papers as well. So that's the front and then you open it up and there it is, isn't that beautiful? Like I said, as well, <laughs> It reminds me of the one I used to have. It is up in the loft somewhere. Mine was blue and white and it had fairies all over it and it still works, but it did last time I used it. And uh, yeah, with this fairy dye, I just thought that's gonna look beautiful and this is where the idea come from. So it is easy to make, there's lots of bits to it. So I'm gonna just get straight into the scoring and the main base first and then I'm gonna go through all the mats and layers as we get to them. because I think otherwise it's just a bit long-winded at the beginning. But you can see inside I've covered all of them. Um, there's a few bits I'm going to change, I mean nothing that you'll probably really see looking at it like this, it, this is perfect, it's still going to get used, but um, I'm going to tweak a few things in this tutorial, but there you have it, you've got this gorgeous glimmer paper, just look at all the sparkle and shine that's coming off of that card, stunning, and then that lovely, this is the Dovecraft mirrored cardstock here as well, and the silver, and it just, yeah, I thought it all come together really nicely and it closes beautifully. And what a lovely keepsake or to put a really special gift in. So, pop that over to one side. Like I said, I'm going to get straight into the scoring. So for the main base, you need a piece that is 10 and a half by 12. And you're going to score along the 12 inch side at three and a half and eight and a half. Then rotate and along the 10 inch side, 10 and a half inch side, you want to score at three and a half and seven. Okay, so really simple scoring for that one. Pop that to one side. Then for the lid, you need a piece that's seven and a half by nine. And along the nine inch side, you want to score at one inch and two inches, and then seven and eight, and then rotate and again score at one and two and then five and a half and six and a half. So basically you've got one inch score lines all the way around and then another one inch score line all the way around because this is a reinforced lid. So there we go, you can just make out how that's gonna look. Then this piece here is for this bit inside. So this bit actually is a separate piece and that is in a proper music box. That's where the, the musical part is kept and concealed. And I also wanted her to be a kind of you know set more forward than what she would be so it is optional when we get to it you could just stick her directly onto the back obviously that would create more room as well but there's something about having that bit in there that for me just made it feel like more of a little music box so this bit is optional and this is four and a half don't need my poke at all four and a half by six along the six inch side you want to score at half an inch and at five and a half and then rotate and you're going to score a quarter of an inch, three quarters of an inch and four and a quarter. I basically, that was the scrap left over from when I cut everything else and so I just made it work for me um, and it does, it works fine. Then you should, if you're cutting this from the 12 by 12 piece, this is the scrap and this is the perfect size for this lip here. So this is separate. Now we're not gonna score it because I find that when you add these bits inside, it's easier to just kind of fold it yourself as we go through it. So just keep that to one side, but you will use it in a bit. Okay, so next with all of your scored pieces, just fold and burnish all of the score lines. Okay, so that's all of my papers um, sorted. So now we just wanna do some cutting. 
So on the shorter side, so this is the ten and a half inch side, you just want to cut up these two score lines. Oh, nearly cut it wrong then. Just cut all the way down to the first score line. Okay, like so, and then flip the whole thing around and just do the same again. Okay, so then what's going to happen is turn it over. These are, this is your middle, so your two sides of your box here. This is going to be my front, so I'm going to bring the back up and around, and then the front up and around, like so. And that means when you look at it, you've got that nice same card going wrapping all the way around. If you were to maybe put that one over, you would then have this kind of piece. And again, if you were to put both of the sides in and bring just this side one up, then you have that open bit on both sides. So start again by just bringing up the middle ones first, then the back and then the front. It will just give you a nicer looking box from the front. But what you will find is you will get little bits hanging over. So you see there, I've got this bit here. So I'm just going to find out what that bit is, and it's this one here. And I can actually see that it's got a lump of the score line still there. So if I put it back in its orientation, so this is my front. These two back bits, what I'm going to do is just take a little wedge, like so. Because I know that that is the side that's probably going to end up hanging out slightly. So again, with that one there, like so. And then again, I'm going to bring them up bring that one and bring around these and just check, imagine, pretend you put glue on and you just want this top one to hide basically everything else there. Now that one does, I've got nothing overhanging there, it looks really nice. And again, check this side. Because the last thing you want to do is get it stuck down and then have something hanging out and it not look too good. But again, that's fine as well. So what we want to do is add glue to these to here. Now you can use double sided tape if you want, I'm just going to use my wet glue. If you're using Tombow, you know, if you're going near the edges, make sure you're just more like pushing the glue around and not really heavy with it because if it oozes out it can get quite sticky. But I've got an eraser that I use and it gets rid of it really easily. But this is still my preferred glue. Okay, bring up the middle one and then bring this one up. Make sure your school lines all match and bring that one around there. Pop it on its side and just with my bone folder there, I'm just going to go in like so. Okay, so that's that one. And then again with this one here, I just want to put glue again on the inside. I'm just focusing on all of the four outer sides first. And then again, bring the middle one up and bring that one round. And then the last we've got to do is put glue on these two here. Okay, so that's my base all done. Don't worry if your this card stock is this one here. It's 220 GSM. So it is obviously flimsy, but we're going to be adding quite a lot of mats and layers onto this now. So it will soon strengthen and you can see the difference. It's the same card and that's now a really strong box. Okay, so I've gone ahead and already prepared all of those mats and layers. And again, I'm just going to go through with you them as we go, you know, use each one. Because again, there's still a lot and I think it can just be a bit too much. So that's my acetate for later. That's all for the lid. Okay, so I'm going to go for this butterfly print for the front. So I've got them for the sides there. I've done the mat, which is the pink one, and then the layer on top. So that's all ready. And then I've got these, which are going to go again on the front and backs. So this one here, the mat, so the pinky piece is four and three quarters by three and a quarter. You'll need two. And then the layer on top is four and a half by three. So just drop down in quarter inch increments. Again, you'll need two of that size for the front and the back. And then the squares, the outer one is three and a quarter inches squared. And then the layer on top is three inches squared. I've put double sided tape on all of mine. So I'm going to just get those all stuck down. Okay, so now let's move on to our lid. So we've obviously already gone ahead and folded and burnished all of those. 
This is just a normal reinforced lid. So those of you that are familiar with this kind of layout and with the four squares, all in all of your corners, you'll know exactly what you've got to do now. But for anybody new, you'll have these four squares in every one of your main corners. You just want to cut down both of those. So cut all the way up past the first score line and down to the second score line. And then this one here, like so. So now we've just got these two. Turn it around and you want to take off all of that one. So you're going to remove those two and then that one, just the one. So all we want left is just one square in the middle attached by one of the sides. And then again, go along to this one, cut all the way down, all the way down again. Remove the outer two and then cut right across that one there. So again, you've got this tab. Then rotate the whole thing and repeat and do the same again. Okay, then what we want to do is just, I'm just grabbing my snips, on all of the little squares, you want to take little wedges off of both the sides, just so you don't get anything sticking out. Oh, I've gone a little bit dodgy with that one, there we go. Um, yeah, just helps you get a nicer fold by removing that bulk. Okay, so that's now what you should have. Next, we're gonna add glue to these four here and we're gonna stick them down. So do one at a time. Again, if you're using a wet glue, you wanna go right to the edges, but be sparing with it. So you don't wanna have oozes of your glue. Okay, like so. Bring it down, tuck it in and bring this one up. Make sure you get a really nice angle. Okay, and go to another one. Bring it down and bring around the side. Okay, so you've got one part there to the, well, one corner side even of your lid. So you just want to do the same with this one. Okay, and then next we're going to fold in just three of these pieces hanging over. Now, one of the longer ones you want to leave out because that's how we're going to attach our lid to our base. So you might have a preference to what you want to be the front of your lid. So, i.e. this bit here that you see. Um, I'm not too worried. I'll go for this one. So just kind of push them all out a bit like that. And you're going to pop glue onto each one. Don't need loads, this is just to really keep it in place. Fold it in and then just with my bone folder and just make sure the glue's spread out and you get a nice, you can see what I'm doing there, nice side, okay? So again I'll go to the opposite one, fold it over, stick it down Okay, and then one of those longer ones, not both, just one. Okay, and you should now have your lid with one piece hanging down, and that will go inside and stick in like that, creating your hinge. Okay, now you can either do it now or do it in a bit, because I'm going to decorate the lid, because I just find doing the decoration as you go a bit easier. So this is a piece I'm going to put on top. Now it looks quite plain, that's because obviously I'm going to be doing all of this over the top of it and you actually only see little bits of the, the cardstock. So I've gone for gold on this one and not the rose gold, partly because I've always run out already so I'll be buying another pack of that for sure. Just pop some double sided tape on, I'll give you the measurements in a moment for both of them. So stick that one on top, flip it over Again, whenever you're using double-sided tape, just make sure you really push down on it just to get out all your air bubbles. Okay, so that's now, and you'll probably start to notice how strong all of these sides start to be. So my gold mat is four and seven eighths of an inch by three and three eighths of an inch. And then the layer on top is three and one eighth of an inch by four and five eighths of an inch. So this time, slightly different because I didn't want much of a frame with this one. I wanted this to almost cover the whole lid with just a little bit poking out. Then I've got these bits to go on the sides and the front. Those bits are for the inside but we'll do that nearer the end because we've got a few other bits to do. 
So these pieces here are all 7 eighths of an inch in width. The length of this one is 4 and 7 eighths, so you'll need two of them. And then the length of these ones are 3 and 3 eighths, and you'll need two of them. And they're going to stick on all four sides, so I'm just going to get them stuck down. Okay, so that's my lid now, and you can see you just get that nice and a little bit of frame coming through. I'm also going to stick the inside pieces for the lid, because again this is easy and that's the inside of the box which we'll do shortly. So this piece here is what I've got my mirror on. The outer layer is four and three quarters by three and a quarter. Um, sorry, that was the mat. The layer on top is four and a half by three. And I've just used my oval framelits and I've just created this little mirror and I framed it with the same cardstock. So this cream here, I just had some lying around. Put some foam adhesive, sorry not some foam adhesive, I put foam adhesive on that one there just so it's lifted slightly and then I've just put double sided tape on this. So I'm just going to stick this piece down. Again you might want to do this when it's all open up and flat but again I'm I'm okay doing it this way, but maybe if you're a bit worried, you can not get it in place. Or also, if you use your wet glue, then that'll give you that little bit of wiggle space, but it's gone in. And just, again, make sure that's all nicely stuck down, like so. How lovely is that? Then you want to stick down, I'm just going to stick three. I'm going to leave one of the shorter sides. I'm not going to stick it down to the very end, because you're actually going to put a little bit of ribbon under there for this piece here. Okay, so you see how that's hidden and the same with this side here. So I'm going to stick down the two longer ones. So one will go in there, one will go in there and then I'm going to stick one on the left hand side. Leave your right hand side free. Okay. Look how lovely that is. And I think it's when you add all of these mats and layers, not only do they strengthen the box, but they really bring it together and it starts to look like what we want. Okay, so that's the lid kind of where we need it to be at the minute. Then we've got these mats and layers. So those pieces are for last and one of those. So I've got, you'll need to actually, I'll tell you the sizes, but we won't stick it down yet. So this piece here is going to go, remember, make sure you've got your front facing you. This bit's going to go inside this bit here. And this is three and a quarter by four and three quarters. As always, the measurements will be on my blog, but some of you do do it along with me. This is three and a quarter by three and a quarter squared, and you'll need two pieces. And this piece here, I think it's the same measurement. This is going on that extra piece. Yeah, four and three quarters by three and a quarter. Okay, but you're not going to stick that one down yet, even if you're not going to add that extra bit that I said about, because you want to put your lid on first before you add your back piece down. So put that to one side and put, again, the right-hand side one to one side because that is how we stick this on. But you want to get as much of the inside pieces done because it's easier um, whilst we've got, you know, haven't got the lid on yet. So this one is going to go in here. This one on the front, remember, the front inside. Okay, so that's now all stuck down. Now we can apply the uh, attach the lid. So this is going to go inside. So you see that this piece is going to go and sit. So you want to bend that outwards and basically kind of clip it over the edge like so. Now where it wants to kind of sit, you want to keep it up at a right angle because that's where we're going to have it. So if I open that one there, can you see that's that's where that stays? That's where you want it to be in that position when we stick it down with the wet glue because if you go that far round it actually pulls this up so that when you close it you're going to have a bigger gap at the back so just make sure whilst you're holding it with your glue you're keeping it in this upright position okay so you add adding your glue to the outer side again if you want to use double sided tape as well but I'm just going to use this glue Okay, and then I'm going to pop it in, sitting it on the edge and keeping it in that upright position. And you can close it up, just make sure it's all nice and straight, but you do need to kind of pinch it. 
So don't feel tempted to fold it right back and squeeze it together. You want to keep it like this. Okay, now I'm going to rest it against something so it stays like that for the minute. Now if you don't want to add that extra section, then you're going to want to add your, sorry, just add that mat now over the top. And basically you can see it just covers where we had that join, okay? But I'm now going to add this piece in which will obviously cover that completely. Okay, so with this piece here, you'll have a quarter inch piece and a half inch piece, that's the top. You just want the bottom, is just that, we should just have that one quarter inch piece. With the long side, you want it in landscape orientation, you just want to remove these very small little rectangles, like so. Like I said, this is optional, okay? It is really not doing anything. It's just more of a, a visual kind of element for me. Okay, like so. And then turn it all the way around so you've got the other long side facing you. And again, you want to remove those smallest little rectangles. Okay, just those ones. And then you want to cut down these two there. So you've got those tabs that have just appeared. Again, take a tiny little wedge off of them, like so, and again, like so. Before I stick those sides down, I'm going to grab my red quarter inch tape and I'm going to pop them on the two quarter inch tabs. So one along the very top one there and then one along the very bottom one. So, just that one there, like so. And then I've also cut this piece here, this decorative piece, and this is four and three quarters by three eighths of an inch. It's really tiny, but I'm gonna add that on that top piece now. Again, it just it's easier to do it now rather than when it's stuck down. And you can also add the acetate that the fairy is going to sit on at this point as well if you want. So I'm not going to, I'm going to do it at the end. But if you want to, then you can do that now as well. See, I just want to make sure I get the right gap either end. There we go. So yeah, now if you want to, this piece of acetate goes in there. I'll give you the measurements when we get to it, but once you've watched the video, if you want to add that in, you can stick that here. And then you can also add that one over the top, but I'm going to do it all when it's all stuck down inside. So yeah, again, different stages to put it together, but do what feels best for you. So now again, I'm going to pop a little bit of glue on that one, bring it down, pop it under and bring that side around. So it's just a little case. You imagine, like I said, the battery and the music box and everything would have been in that piece. But I just like that the fairy could be, in fact, yeah, you don't even want to put that piece on there because obviously the acetate for the fairy's got to go in, but she can be that close if you want. You can imagine just her there. So like I said, I think this is just a personal preference for me. A lot of you may well be watching this now and think, yeah, I'm not going to bother putting that in because, you know, like I said, it does take a little bit of room up, but not a lot. But for me, it was just another nice little element to add. And I always like to make things a bit more challenging for myself. <laughs> so I'm just going to fold in them. So you can see now we've just got this kind of little case, like so. And then I'm just going to take the top of this off, like so. Fold that one in. And I'm also going to remove the bottom and fold that one in. That one's really just going to tack down because you can't physically get into it. But then pop it in, keep it on an angle, get right down to the bottom first, squeeze it right up and then you can squeeze that bit in. It should go in really easily, just push on the back. My lid's nice and secure now and that also stops the lid kind of lifting as well. But you can see now how that's coming together. Okay, next I'm going to add my acetate and my fairy. Now, 
it's entirely up to you, you know, you, you, not all of you will have this fairy, you might have a stamp image that you're going to fussy cut, yours might be bigger or smaller. I've done it so that her feet are just hovering above the top of this piece here, all right? So with whatever you've got, you know, kind of, I just wanted the majority of her to be in the middle of the mirror, so when you're looking down like that, can you see she's kind of right in the centre there. So just have a look at what you've got. So your length of acetate, I guess, will vary depending on what you're using, but um, I'm just going to roughly tell you what I'm using here, and I think it was about half an inch thick. I've just done this all by um, kind of eye, really, so you wanted it, in this case, to like see where it covers on the back of her there. And obviously you don't want the acetate going right to the bottom of your box, so now that seems right. So it's half an inch by four, okay? So if you have got that same one as me, that's what you want to use. And I'm just going to trim my bottom there's a bit thicker than the top, like so. And again, I'm going to apply some double-sided tape to my fairy, because I can see where... I can stick it. Obviously, I don't want the sticky tape going over those bits where the wings are, because otherwise it will get sticky in the box. So I'm just popping a couple there. Remove the backing, and then again, just stick that nice and straight, like so. It's so pretty, isn't that sweet? It's really, really lovely. And then turn it over, and you want to apply sticky tape on. You don't need to cover the whole thing, bearing in mind remember where her foot is is going to be on show so I'm just going to come down a little bit below that and just snip those two bits off and then my nice decorative paper is going to cover all of this up. And then focusing on the fairy and keep her in the middle, so about there, and then I can stick down the acetate because I'm not too worried if it's even a little bit wonky or something because my decorative paper will cover that so you can see now she floats there really nicely and then that other larger piece you should have got all those bits sticking to me I'm just going to stick that now over there okay now that looks so cute I love it I love it I love it okay next we will add this piece here and I've just realized actually you didn't want to stick those ones in there was a reason. You see what I mean? There's so many steps to this. So yeah, don't do those ones yet. Although saying that, how did I do it? I must have done it. Yeah, I must have done it after looking at it. I did. I cut them down shorter. So I'll give you the measurements. We'll have to redo that one. I'm not going to be too worried because I think I can see. Yeah, because I didn't put glue on the side so I can still slide mine in. So that's okay. Right, you've got this piece now which was left over. So this should be 12 by... Uh, one and a half yeah 12 by one and a half keep the one and a half but we will trim it but like I said I find doing this part so even when I'm just doing any kind of concealed closures this is how I like to do them so get your piece here kind of roll the rest of it like so so it can all go inside the box like that and you basically want to you can if you've done the bit I've done I didn't put any tape on the side so I can slide that right in there can you see all right and you want to have about three quarters of an inch, what is it, one and a half, yeah, so three quarters of an inch, halfway kind of hanging. If you can't get your piece in there, just bring it out a bit and have it start where it, where it does, so it doesn't matter. So I'm going to have mine about that. The height of what's kind of showing doesn't really matter at this point. Then you want to keep it really butt it up to that end, and then as you get up to this corner, push it right into the corner and pinch the top. Okay, like so. And I find by doing it this way, you get a really nice tight closure inside rather than fussing about with those measurements on the scoreboard and then just hold that in that corner don't worry if this is kind of coming out now just keep your finger with that perfectly in that corner and come all the way down to the other side and again pinch it right in there and just pinch the top and then you're going to bring it right the way down here and it should only overhang by a little bit and you have to kind of guesstimate but I'm going to just trim off about a quarter of an inch and now that should fit in there which it does perfectly okay so you can see now that one's in there and that one's in there and what I'll probably do is just take a little bit off of the other end and then they're even so now if I just slide that all in 
to put tape on it in a minute. It will sit in there perfectly. You don't get any buckling or nothing. So next, <laughs> bring it down and then if you just fold now and burnish where we pinched those lines. So that one and that one, okay. And then come down about three quarters of the way, or halfway, sorry, come in halfway down and add your tape all the way across. Okay, so you wanna make sure you've popped it on the outer side, because obviously that's gonna then stick on that inner side. And then also just round off the edges. You don't have to, but I usually do, and I didn't do it on that one. They just might catch, at least this way, it's nice and smooth. And then just take the backing off. By adding that middle bit, it does complicate, I guess, the way it's put together, but you, you can still do it. Right, start from a, one side. So just fold that bit up on itself, because it won't stick, so obviously the tape's on the outer side, so I've just held it together there. Pop it all inside, just try and obviously make sure you don't stick it all down, and you want to get this bit in here first. And I'm just lining up the top of my tape with the top of my box. Just push that in there a bit so I can get it in place. And then I can start lining it all up. So that's that one. And then start coming all the way across here. I said some of you might look at this and be like, oh God, no. Just use wet glue if you're worried that you're gonna get it a bit wonky, but it will just kind of find its own home. Yeah, so <laughs> it's fine inside, I'm not too worried, but now where I put it before, can you see that covered it? Whereas you can see that strip, but I'm not too worried. I still think it looks okay. And then that one I'll just cut down. Should just still be able to get it in there. Yeah, I can do. So that one would just be slightly looking different, but I'm not too worried. Now, when you close it, you should get a perfect closure. See? Really, really nice because you curved those bits over there as well. So this is now the bit of ribbon which you want to hold this in place. And the easiest way to do this is keep this up in that right angle like so. Pop the ribbon just inside like so. You might want to go higher there or you might want to go down there. I'm keeping it in the middle. You want to go across nice and straight to here. Let me see what I'm doing. And then let me just cut that down. Ooh. So I'll tell you the right measurement then you'll know so yeah, it was four, because I remember on the other one it was four inches. So I'm gonna pop a little bit of tape just on the ends, because once we put the decorative paper over uh, the end bits, that will kind of really secure it into place. Okay, and then if you focus on one side first, so I'm just gonna stick that in the middle on an angle, like so, okay. Then bring your lid up so it's on that angle there, and then just, Keep the ribbon nice and straight and wherever it decides to finally end is where you want to stick it down. So now if I let go, that will hold there perfectly. Okay, and then I can cover it up with this piece here. So you will need, if you've done it obviously the way that I should have done it, and that was to stick that down. So stick that down before you stick your these side panels. They will all be this, that one will be the same measurement I gave you, but these side ones will be the same height, but the width will be half an inch less because you need to take out, take off the half an inch for that piece there. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep mine the same and just slide that in there and stick it down like so. Okay. Like that, so that is the box done. I absolutely love it. And then this will all come down. The angel, the angel, the fairy just finds her own way. She naturally, as you close that lid, you can see she just bends, which is why you want a nice, strong acetate. Don't forget adding this piece over the top of your ribbon on the other side as well, before I forget. And that bit will fit in there perfectly, like so. I know a lot of you have got grandchildren, so I'm hoping that you're going to be making this for... Because you can easily make this for a boy as well, obviously a theme for a boy, and you could have his favourite character or something that pops up. So it's, you know, yeah, it's, but it's good for boys and girls. Okay, these are all the bits I used for the top. So that's the paper flowers. These are the other paper flowers, sorry. Yeah, the oh, paper blossoms, they're paper flowers. 
I've got this frame which is tucked in just there. The doilies, little magical wands, flat back pearls. Now I don't have another make the wish, make a wish, sorry. So I'm gonna see if they've got something that would work in amongst here. There's fairy dust, the fairy dust sticker might be really nice actually. Um, yes, yeah, so that'd probably be the one I use. There are the butterflies. I just pull the tops off, so I've still got the stickers there, but I pull the tops off. And that is what that Make-A-Wish was in, that was here. But the others, just for you, that might work. But the others, Have a Magical Day, Birthday Wishes and With Love are obviously more for like card toppers. So that's what I'm gonna do. So like I said, I'm gonna now speed this all up and you can just see how I put it all together. And there you have it guys, that is my decorated lid. I've just done some die cut leaves there in the same shimmer paper which I used for the base. It looks quite yellowy in the video but it is gold. Um, I've added the wand there. You probably saw me adding this pen. This is the Spectrum Noir uh, Spectrum Sparkle. Really, really lovely. It goes on wet and then it dries completely clear. And can you see? That gorgeous sparkle and then I just used the sticker there fairy dust I stuck it on some card that was left over from the actual lid and the base and then stuck that on there so slightly different to that one but still looks lovely so there you have it so again open up this one got some glue strings there get rid of them they seem to have stuck everywhere how wonderful and that one there look at them beautiful so there you have it. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope I've inspired you. Lots of different, I guess, ways to do it. You don't have to decorate inside. You don't have to add any of that. You can just have her there. You may not even want to do that or have it as a jewelry box. You may just like the box itself. You can make it, you know, for a guy as well as obviously for a girl. I just think they're lovely. I really, really did enjoy these. And I've just realized, and you're probably looking going, Sam, you haven't decorated the bottom. No, I haven't. That piece there will be quick work it out here it'd be four and three quarters by three and a quarter again it's up to you if you do want to or not I may well not add that one one I am keeping the other will be as a gift I'm not sure which one I'm going to keep yet but yeah as always if you've enjoyed today's tutorial please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you get to see more thanks for watching bye <laughs>